A quickly growing type of ETFs in Canada these days is the area of covered call ETFs, where fund managers strive to generate additional income to a portfolio and pay out very attractive distributions. A lot of our viewers I know are definitely interested in this type of investment, and we are pleased to be joined today with Om Karmalkar, Vice President and Portfolio Manager at BMO ETFs, a division of BMO As Global Asset Management. Om, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Uh... It, it, it's nice to meet you, Om. And uh, we're so looking forward to sort of picking your brain today and sharing some of your wisdom with uh, with our viewers. And, you know, I just want to go straight into this and kick things off with a bang. Uh, yeah. I want to address some of the concerns that people have when they're dealing with covered calls or the myths, or the misconceptions, I guess you could call them. And what we hear all the time is uh, when you have a covered call strategy, a lot of concerns are that it is a risky type of fund, a risky type of investment. And I'm kind of assuming that it's because when people uh, hear the term options, they automatically associate that with risk. When I look through the, the fun fact documents for the covered call ETFs that you guys manage, it's pretty much across the board a medium risk rating. So I wonder if you can maybe shed some light on this concern that people have. I think it's legitimate, uh, but uh, maybe you know just sort of share the strategies that BMO has in place to uh, to address that concern that so many people have. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know that's a great question because I agree. You know, uh, having having the name options or derivatives, you know, it always uh, raises concerns with uh, investors. But the covered call strategy is actually not a very high risk strategy. And, you know, the covered call strategy, the way it works is you hold the underlying stock or shares. So, for example, you know, let's say we hold BMO shares. And what we do is we write call options on it to generate that extra income on top of whatever dividends you're getting paid by those shares. So in, in a broad sense, you know, you're not taking that much risk. The only risk you have is if the stock starts to, you know, rally a lot and then you might not participate on the full upside. But in general, you know, we, we when we did our analysis, you know, if you have a basket of portfolios uh where you don't write any covered call options versus a basket of portfolios or share stocks where you're writing covered call options on a consistent consistent basis your volatility you know which is another measure of risk is reduced by approximately 10 to 20 percent so actually you know it's actually beneficial to be you know if you want lower risk but also have some upside participation to be in strategies like the covered call strategy you know, this is kind of a add on question because it is closely related to risk. But you know, one of the features of a typical covered call strategy is the volatility of an equity portfolio is reduced. So the volatility in and of itself with the premiums actually mm -hmm. mitigating the, yeah. the downside risk. A lot of people we've heard uh, from, they don't necessarily believe this and they still believe that the strategy <laughs> just overall does increase the risk of a portfolio. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So in terms of, like you said, right, when you write covered calls, when you're writing those call options, you're collecting a premium and that premium actually helps reduce some of the loss when, if, you know, markets start to go down. So, you know, something we have seen in 2022 where markets are going down and you're still collecting that premium. So it helps mitigate some of those losses. Uh, in terms of re uh, overall reduction volatility, you do see volatility reducing over the medium to long term. You know, there, there are possibility in the short term that volatility might be higher, but that's more because the overall volatility of the market has increased. So if mm -hmm. the overall market volatility has increased and you're holding a subset uh, of those, you know, share uh, companies of the overall market. And so automatically the volatility has increased. But in the medium to long term, it's always or, you know, usually you see a 10 to 20 percent reduction, depending on, you know, the region you're invested in, depending on the mm -hmm. sectors and the companies. Of course. And, you know, this is a question that I wouldn't say is directly re related to covered calls necessarily, but I actually just yeah. did a video, like literally my last video. I talked about when you have these funds that pay out these higher distribution distributions, right. um, you know, typically a lot of investors will worry that the funds themselves, you know, yeah, they'll receive the very attractive yields, but the principal will slowly erode. How accurate is that? So, you know, I, I can't speak to how other people, you know, run their ETFs or how, how they kind of pay out their dividends. But our philosophy at BMO is very simple. You know, we want to pay what we earn. So every month, you know, we pay out whatever we earn from the call premiums. But all and also, you know, the dividends and everything that we have earned from holding those companies. So we we, we believe in just paying out what we have earned. So the principal, mm -hmm. you know, or that the client has invested in can keep growing. Um, 
if you don't mind, I'm just going to ask a question yeah. here because um, a concern, I, you know, we seem to be talking a lot about concerns yeah. here, but I guess yeah. that's why you're here to sort of explain yeah. everything uh, to us. And uh, you'll hear all the time that um, one of the downsides to a covered call strategy is that it limits the upside. So one thing preserving the, the principle, but, but limiting the upside. And, and a lot of people would even say, uh, I see this in our comments all the time, is yeah. basically there's no upside because the covered calls will mitigate that Um when you when it comes to the concept of the potential growth of a portfolio, um, how big of a deal is that in a typical covered call strategy, um, or what steps specifically does BMO take the way you right. manage portfolios to mitigate that risk of of having no upside potential? Yeah, no, that's a great question. You know, and we are aware that it is a risk that investors are always looking at. Right, we we want them to get that income, but we also want them to have that upside participation because they are growing their you know in, uh, their income or whatever it might be for their future goals. Mm. So the way we manage our covered call strategy is first, we only write covered calls on 50% of our portfolio. So the other 50% has full upside participation. Mm -hmm. The second thing we do is on the 50% that we are writing our covered call options, we are actually writing out of the money options. So you still have upside participation up to, up to that, uh, you know, up to that uh, call option strike. And after that, of course, if it rallies more, you have the other 50%, which is participating on the upside. And, you know, we are cognizant because, you know, of uh, market risks uh, on the on the growth side. So what we do is depending on the stock, you know, some some within the tech space, volatility is very high in, in the recent uh, times. So we write actually more out of the money compared to, you know, mm -hmm. more stable companies such as the Canadian banks. That makes sense. So, so, so clients have that, you know, strong upside participation, but at the same time, that monthly income, which they need. Gotcha. And I got a question here. Um, we could have honestly started with this one because, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't straight <laughs> in, but before we move on yeah. to other, other topics, <laughs> maybe just take a quick moment and tell us a little bit about yourself, like how you ended up in this position with Bebo yeah. as vice president and portfolio manager. Yeah, uh, for sure. So I started, I started at TD Asset Management. So I was on the derivatives mm -hmm. or, you know, synthetics desk uh, there for about three and a half years. Then I switched over uh, within TD Asset Management on the asset allocation team, which is a multi-asset, uh, multi-asset team. So managing fund of fund solutions. So there I used to be a portfolio manager managing both the strategic design and the tactical asset allocation and also helping manage the TD retirement funds. And then I switched over. You know, I think it was June. Yeah, June of last year, uh, uh, June of last year over to the BMO team. Uh, you know, they you know, the reason I switched, you know, they have a great team. Uh, you know, ETFs is a growing business. Uh, uh, so that's why I thought it was the right move. Uh, wanted to join a great team. So I switched over uh, last year uh, and as a vice president portfolio manager. Well, I'm going to sort of piggyback off that because you yeah. know, if you're, you've obviously did your, your research and decided to go to BMO. Um, when I look at a company like BMO with you know mm -hmm. so many offerings out there, and when you look at your covered call strategy, one of the things is, is pretty obvious is you have covered call strategies that you write on a whole bunch of a variety of underlying assets and different yeah. portfolio types. It's not just the, the big Canadian banks, for example. Right. Um, is it fair to ask or is it fair to say that does BMO have sort of an overarching strategy that applies to all of those different types of funds or yeah. um, are they all managed sort of more micro uh, in a more micro manner? What, what yeah, else? so that's a great question. Uh, so the way we, the way you know, we look at our covered call suite, right, is we look at the core and then we look at satellite. So the the reason I say core is we have the Canadian high div, we have the U.S., we have Europe, we have global. So that kind of makes the core of uh, any client's portfolio having kind of those regional exposures. And if they want income, that's why there's the covered calls. And we understand that you know not everyone wants, uh, you know, they want to have some sector allocations mm -hmm. as well. And that's why we have, you know, those satellite kind of covered calls, I would say, you know, where we have the the Canadian banks, we have the US banks, we have the tech technology covered call. So we have, so that, that's the way we have kind of, you know, summarize it where you have those core uh, covered call uh, ETFs, mm -hmm. uh, which complement the overall portfolio of, you know, clients portfolio. And then you have those uh, satellite sector covered call ETFs, which complement, you know, if you want to take any sector bets or you want to get exposure to certain sectors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more spe more specific options. If for exactly, more specific uh, options on those. Yeah. Um, next question here. It, it's fairly common that, as you touched on during volatile markets, it is more attractive to write 
covered calls because of those attractive premiums. And we've definitely been seeing a lot of volatility in <laughs> yeah. 2022. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, when the markets are more normal and often, you know, the markets are normal, like rather than extremely volatile, how does yeah. BMO's strategy work in a normal market condition mm. when yeah. stocks are more or less, let's say, trading within a, a more tighter range? Yeah. So in normal conditions, right? Uh, so markets tend to be, you know, like you said, in a, in a bit, bit of more range bound. You know, uh, and you know it actually works well in that environment as well because we we know that markets are in a range bound, and you're writing calls, you know, uh, a strike at a certain level, and we know as markets are in a range bound and they're not spiking up and down and up and down, you know, though you collect those premiums without getting called away. So mm -hmm. you know those call options as markets slowly grinding up, slowly grinding up, you're writing call options, you know, on a monthly or you know every two month basis, and you're slowly collecting the premium. So it actually works well in a uh, in a normal slow grind you know bullish market, you know. So so you know for example, if we look at like 2019, which was you know I would say a bit more normal compared to the last two years we've seen, and, you know these strategies have done well uh, in that in those environments as well. Um, when I when I managed uh, clients' money and and for my own portfolios, um, I employed a uh, some some fairly basic options strategies covered calls being one of them and one of the things that sort of goes through my mind as I look back and even now with my own portfolio is the amount of work that goes into managing a strategy yeah. like this um, replicating that structure on your own and a question that I've always been curious about in a professional organization like you where you have teammates etc um, are you able to give us sort of a, a look behind the scenes and uh, share the work, like what actually yeah. happens to make these uh, property, uh, to make these these strategies happen? And I'm saying this more specifically for people who might be considering going down that route. Is there, you know, what are the key things that they need to know before they venture down there? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the way we, you know, if we if we kind of just start from the the you know, first step is we look at our portfolio and we say what kind of companies do we want to hold. Right? We want some blue chip companies uh, within the fund. And in terms of day-to-day -day management, right? It's we have, you know, let's look at like the Canadian, we hold about 35 names, US 35 names, Europe 35 names. So when you hold so many names, you know, you need to have strong operational uh, uh, strategy in place to be able to manage covered call on every single name. And then you have to worry about, you know, there's dividend risk. You need to be able to have operations in place to be able to roll these call options if they get in the money. You need operations in place to be able to write call options if they, um, when they expire. So there's there's a lot of steps that go into it. You know, also like within the Canadian market space, you know, we work very closely as being one of the biggest, uh, you know, op covered call strategy providers in Canada. Uh, we manage about 12 billion uh, approximately within the covered call space itself. Uh, you know, we, we have strong relationships with other uh, other banks, uh, you know, other brokers. So in the Canadian market, when we want option pricing, you know, we, we, we have that uh, relationships uh, where we can go out in the market and, you know, make big uh, purchases or sales in the uh, in the option market. So, you know, there's a lot of a lot of nitty gritty that goes in. And that's why, you know, that's why we created these cover call solutions, because you want clients to have that one stop mm -hmm. solution where they don't have to worry about, oh, do I need to roll this option today? Do I need to worry about uh, dividend risk? Do I need to worry about this, that, right? So they can focus more on, okay, what are my goals? How do I achieve these goals? Uh, okay, now I have the tools to be able to achieve those goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I see this type of a fun structure yeah. um, as very beneficial uh, as opposed to going the DIY route specifically yeah. on this, but that's just that's just my thoughts on it. <laughs> no, I agree. Like, I think on a D, uh, you know, if you, if you wanted to do it yourself, you know, if you're doing it on one, one, one company or two companies, yeah, it's possible. Mm, to yeah, 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 but <laughs> but when you when you're doing like on fifty or hundred different names, you know, it yeah. it, it it gets very difficult if there's no yeah. structure in place. Um, um, at BMO, do there, do your funds generally pay out the full amount of yield generated during let's say the month, like, or do you guys set a target and then limit the distribution to that amount, like regardless of how much income surplus you brought into the fund throughout the month. Um, maybe speak on that for just a moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so like I said previously, you know, we believe in paying out what we have earned. So, you know, uh, like you said, we only we pay out what we have earned during that month. So we mm. don't hold anything back or, you know, we don't mm. say, OK, we only earn, let's say, you know, 5 percent, but we're going to still pay out 6 percent. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll still we'll only pay out what we have earned. That's our philosophy because, you know, we believe in keeping it consistent. 
And that way, you know, our clients also know on a consistent basis, like this is how much monthly income I'm going to get from this product. There's no variations because you'll see in some other products, there's bigger mm-hmm. variations like this month, they pay 10 cents. Next month, they'll pay 20, then back to five cents. So there's a lot of variation and it might cause some issues with, you know, managing expenses on the client, you know, at the end client level. So we believe in paying out what we have earned and keeping it, you know, consistent uh, on a monthly or quarterly basis, whatever it might be. And it can help out with cash flow. Um, exactly. From a, uh, from a pure portfolio management perspective, this is something that I struggled with. In fact, kind of got yeah. burned on a couple of times uh, myself is... <clears throat> you write a, a, a call, a covered call on a particular stock. And then I know you guys have an amazing research team. I mean, I was yeah. a one man shop, but you guys have all these guys telling yeah. you, uh, you know, what's going to happen or pred- predicting. So you have a company that you own, yep. you have a covered call written on. And then the, uh, you know, the research team says like, we really see a strong potential growth with right. this name in the portfolio. How do you manage that? Like, do you, do you close the position and sort of rewrite at a different price? Do you just let the stock get called away? But there's different options you have. Right. Generally speaking, how do you manage that? Yeah. So generally speaking, if let's say if, you know, if we get that saying like, you know, let's say company X, we, we believe in the company X and it's going to do really well after earning. Hmm. So there's two or two ways we manage it. First is we see, do we have any options already on that company? If okay. we do, then we, we take, uh, you know, we analyze, okay, how much out of the money ness is it? Is it in the money? If it's out of the money, we'll we'll wait until you know it gets closer, and then we'll roll it. We won't let it get exercised, so we still hold right. the underlying. Uh, second is we'll look at you know okay we don't have any options on it. Uh, let's write some on it, but you know now we are cognizant that you know it's so we'll write further out of the money on mm-hmm. it. So that way you know we still have that upside participation, but at the same time we we, we understand that we we have to generate some income. That's the main goal of these uh, strategies. You know, uh, the main goal is income plus growth, not just growth. So, you know, mm-hmm. so if we are very, you know, bullish, let's say on a single company name, you know, we'll write further out of the money. Um, maybe we'll wait if there's earnings. Maybe we'll wait a few days and then right after earnings. So, so there's a, a lot of moving but, pieces. <laughs> a lot of moving pieces to take yeah. into account. Yeah. <laughs> With interest rates rising so much this year, yeah, and you know, along that obviously comes the higher rates for GSEs, term deposits, you name it. Yeah. Does that put pressure on these types of funds? Uh, yeah, like it, it does, because I think, you know, if, if you kind of look at GICs, I think they're giving you, I think, four or five percent now, approximately. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so and, and on the covered calls, I think you're getting about six, seven percent. So I know, you know, from a from a pure client or investor perspective, they look at it. GIC guaranteed four or five percent. That sounds <laughs> safe, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, covered calls, you know. I don't know what that is or, you know, options or equity, six, seven riskier. But so it does put pressure, you know, in terms of like uh, people understand, like understanding one, the difference between the two. But, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't really truly understand the risks within GIC. You know, I understand it's guaranteed, but one of the risks that I see is you're locked in for that period. Right. So let's say, you know, go out in the market today to invest in a GIC, you get 5%. Looks pretty good but you're locked in for one year. Within that one year, we're in a very, you know, environment where economy can change very drastically. You know, we can see in two months, you know, feds might come out very dovish because, you know, inflation has started to curve. We might see the geopolitical tensions in Europe, uh, you know, with the uh, Russia and Ukraine war, uh, you know, salt. I'm not saying it will happen, but, you know, maybe it it changes. It's a very fast moving uh, environment. And if that happens, we could see a strong equity rally or growth rally. But as clients, you're locked in GIC and it's very hard to get out and switch back into the equity market, right? So that's why I think covered calls provides that income, but also that upside growth potential if something were to happen. And also on the GIC front, you know, you're even after four or 5%, you're not really beating inflation. So it's a, mm. if, I, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of risks involved that not a lot of people truly look into. Mm-hmm. I, I feel yeah. like they look yeah. at the G and they say, hey, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of a lot of people do look for that. I, I guess the security or the consistency or the predictability. Right. So yeah. um, it, it makes sense that there would be this competition. But yeah, thanks for sort yeah. of explaining those differences yeah. Yeah. there. Um, it kind of reminds me of when I use option strategies for myself. I, I always I kind of have this. I'm going to call it investment first and options second strategy. This is what I do, and I always have said I want to own a company. For example, specifically with covered calls here, 
I'm going to own a company that I would want to own, assuming it never gets called away. I mean, I like the company. That's the first thing. Then you can supplement the income from that by writing this covered call strategy. Um, is, is that, um, I, you know, I haven't gone through and looked at all of your portfolios today to see where you're at. Is that similar to what you guys do? Or oh. if there's an opportunity to, to pull in a higher premium on a company that you wouldn't necessarily own otherwise, do you balance that off or do you have oh. sort of a... No, so is the, you know we, we believe in having a strong foundation. So mm. and building a strong foundation is by holding you know companies you believe in, you know because this is a long term you know medium to long term strategy. So you want mm. the company to be there in like five, ten, fifteen years, yeah. growing their earnings, growing their revenue, right? Uh, so if you if you look into our you know like Canadian or U.S. we hold or even Europe any of our cover calls we hold blue chip you know, dividend companies that are, you know, paying stable dividends or even growing their dividends on a yearly basis. So that shows that they have strong cash flow, even during mm -hmm. tough times like 2022 or even during COVID. And then we go ahead and write calls on it. You know, for within Canada, you know, we hold mm -hmm. like the Canadian banks, which are, I think, you know, banks are, Canadian banks are like the grade A of financial institutions around the world, I would say. You know, within US, we hold uh, blue chip names uh, within the tech space and, you know, like within the financial space, we hold like Coca Cola, Pepsi. So, you know, we believe in having a strong foundation and then uh, overlaying a covered call strategy on top of it. Thanks. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I take uh, some comfort in that because if that's, yeah. I mean, if BMO and all the bright minds there uh, choose that as a, as a successful strategy, yeah. it kind of mirrors what I do. So I'm just, yeah, thanks yeah, for sharing that, that detail with us. <laughs> I think this is my last question here. Um, yeah. um, and I want to talk about taxation slightly because I know this is obviously very important when choosing your investment vehicles. Yeah. I know there are some tax benefits to generating options income, particularly in let's say a non-registered account. Yeah. Can you explain how this income receives beneficial tax treatment? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, there are two, two big benefits of kind of the covered call strategy. One is any income that is received from the cover, like writing the calls, earning that premium. So any income received from those premiums is taxed at the capital gain account. So mm -hmm. unlike, you know, fixed income or GICs where you, any income you get is considered income goes into your, you know, uh, tax at the full income uh, tax rate, capital gain, it's taxed at the capital gain. So 50% of it. The second benefit is if, you know, if clients want to invest, you know, internationally, uh, well, any income generated from kind of the option. So any withholding tax, there's no withholding tax on this. So you get a benefit of that as well. So there's two benefits from a tax perspective, you know, that clients can take advantage of capital gain and no withholding tax. Hmm. Uh, I, I know that uh, obviously taxation is a, is a big issue with a lot of people. Yeah. So that's um, uh, something that plays well into this strategy. Um, you guys do a lot of different things, <clears throat> as I kind of said earlier, different types yeah. of funds, different structures, yeah. etc. Is it fair to ask you this question? Is there a type of client mm -hmm. that this strategy is most suitable for? Would you say, I mean, sort of in a, as, as non, take off your BMO hat just yeah, for, yeah. for a minute there, are there clients that this would not be suitable for? Or, you know, yeah. what are your yeah, thoughts sure. on that? Yeah, so, uh, so let's, from a, from a, let's see who's suitable for first. You know, if, if you are retired, you know, and you're looking for income, great product you know you get that income and you get that upside participation because i know for retirees a lot of people think okay i just need income now and no growth but you know mm -hmm. i always talk to them and i always say let's say you're 65 or 66 and you're retired now you still have another 25 30 years to go and you mm -hmm. need your uh, portfolio to give you income but the, at the mm -hmm. same time it needs to grow to be able to keep providing with that income down the road so mm -hmm. you need to have, you need to balance both of them. Second is anyone looking for income, but don't want as much risk in the equity market. So you want some income, you want to participate in the equity market, but you don't want to take the full risk of participating in the equity market. So it's a good product for that. Uh, in terms of people who might not, you know, want to invest or, you know, mm -hmm. who might be a bit risky is, you know, people who want 100% growth participation, who want to par participate one-to-one -one on the upside, right? And this, this strategy is not meant to do that because you are writing covered calls. So there are times that you will get called away or, you know, you won't participate fully on the upside. Mm -hmm. So, so again, it, it really depends on, you know, your needs, your goals, you know, so if your needs and goals are, I need income, but also some upside, great product. You know, if your need and growth is, I'm not going to look at this 30 years later and want one-to-one -one participation and 100% upside, maybe, maybe there are other products that, you know, provide that 
beta one uh, kind of exposure. The, and I'm sure BMO offers those other types of products. Yeah, and we, we, uh, exactly. And we have products for, the, uh, for that clientele as well. <laughs> nice. Always. Uh, and yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's why I'll just wrap up and say, you know, yeah. we're, we're very thankful to have you on, Om, um, yeah. and Mark making the time here. I know we're all filming over the holidays. This is holiday time. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> no, it, it doesn't mean a lot to take time out of your schedule. And, and really at the end of the day, like educate our viewers on the ins and outs yeah. of covered call ETFs. Because like you said, you know, that's what we focused on today. But dad, you called out, there are so many options out there from BMO. Yeah, and that's yeah. why we're so happy to work with them here and for them to be a um, sponsor and partner of this video. Um, we will have a link to the whole lineup of funds down below this video. So a lot of the ones that you referenced today, the Canadian banks covered calls, we'll have them all down below for the viewers to check out. And I would encourage you guys, uh, the viewers, you know, take a closer look. So down below in the description, if there's, you know, you can see the, the vast array of options they have and, and see what may be suitable for you. But, you know, with that, I will just say that again, thank you a lot um, for coming on. Yeah. And um, no, as well, thanks Mark. for having me, Mark and Brendan. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and I'll just echo that as well. Thank yeah. you so much, Om. And, and I, you, I think you did a f fabulous job of sort of explaining some of these questions yeah. that I have, and, and I have them myself, but also uh, on behalf of our viewers. So really appreciate yeah. that. Perfect. Thank you, guys. All right. Absolutely. Well, hey, okay. if good. you guys enjoyed, give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. And uh, with that, thank you, Om. Mark, we'll call it there. I hope everyone has a happy holidays.